Cavalier. Hello, the stressless viewers whose computer in conjunction with their SD card is not trying to conspire against you in an attempt to see your channel's demise. My name is Tando. My computer fried three videos worth of footage. I am sad and too stressed to be blessed. However, I do have words to share from a trip to Kenya that the lover and I took over what? It's so long, I don't even remember how long ago it was. I think three weeks ago. <laughs> so I apologize. The next three videos are going to be just demoted from bomb AF videos to bomb adjacent videos. BBC Africa Hala de Lobara and I to come onto their television screens and speak English. We showed up and seeing as how I do not have actual footage to turn into a vlog, I'm just gonna stand here and let you know about the things that I really, really enjoyed or liked about Nairobi. I had never ever set foot there, so these are my first impressions. Also disclaimer, we only went to Nairobi for just a weekend, so these are just things that I see. First hand, other things that you might have opinions about that I don't know about, do not at me. Train to Hatfield. The next station is Santa. I should be headed to work right now, but instead I'm in the cloud train headed to the airport to go to Nairobi. Passengers for OR Tambo International Airport, please change trains. Guess who I bumped into at the airport? Hi. <laughs> it's a <your> girl V. <laughs> She's buying Kenyan money even. I'm a shillings. It's really majorly three things, so let's get into them. Number one being, I am going to need intel from the people of Nairobi to let me know what is in the air that makes people so gentle and kind and just nice. People were so chill and nice and cool and just and good. Good people, just good. I don't know, it's probably because I was too excited and really just happy to be there for the very first time. But in the space of three days, I only experienced people who are just genuinely just nice for no reason, just for niceness. Not because I was a foreigner, not because I was a tourist. People were just like, this is how I am. Try and be nice too, if you wanna. Let's, let's go. And that generally does it for me because the one thing that I treasure the most when I'm traveling is human relations. I believe that human beings will tell me a better story of who the city and the country is better than any monument will ever try to. So if the human beings that I encounter are just glorious, then I'm already sold. I'm ready to pack my bags and move to Kenya. From the driver that they sent to pick us up at the airport, from the lady that helped us with changing our SIM cards, to our hosts, to the friends that my friend keeps and then we made our friends, to the guy on the street who's selling Evos. Thank you so much Kenya for your beautiful people. The thing that I like number two about Kenya is that for some odd reason, I don't know, I don't study politics and international relations, but Kenya is like a target for terror attacks and there was a little bit of concern from my side. But it was nice to see that there's a lot of security that's been beefed up. But at the same time, it makes a person feel a little bit antsy to walk into a mall and have to go through like a scanner. Put your goods through, put your body through so that they can ensure that you don't have any kind of bombs and stuff. But I do appreciate that they're taking extra precautionary measures to make sure that people are safer. 
What I liked about the ruby number three, the lover and I were mighty apprehensive about the fact that while I'm shooting, going into Kenya, the lover and I were really apprehensive about the fact that we are openly homosexual. Anybody can just type lesbian or South African lesbian or whatever the case is and our names pop up. So it's very dangerous to go into situations where you are not welcome in that way. I mean, by law in Kenya, you get in prison for 14 years for committing any homosexual acts. That could be hand holding, that could be hugging, obviously, sexuals. I don't know how they find that out. But we were really concerned about the fact that in Kenya, two consenting adults cannot do as they please in the privacy of their own home. But that's part of the reason why we went there. Sometimes you have to do things that are uncomfortable for you um, in order to pave the way for other people to be able to live their fully fledged lives to their fullest potential. I don't believe Abella considers herself to be an activist. There's a plane going by. It's hard to shoot. I don't believe Babala considers herself to be an activist. I certainly don't consider myself to be an activist. But sometimes all the activism that's needed is just you being you and existing in a space that wants to fight you for being yourself. So I definitely went there with that kind of mentality. Only for my apprehension to just be alleviated because the governance that I thought would be on us was not even a little bit there. But you know what it's like? It's like here in South Africa, on paper, everything is hunky-dory. The constitution is like, yes, I am here for you guys. But on the ground, men in South Africa are raping lesbians to try and correct their sexual orientation. Don't get me wrong, I truly appreciate where South Africa is, particularly in comparison to the rest of the continent, in terms of LGBTQ plus rights. But we do have a lot of work to do in terms of human interaction with what the law says. In Kenya, I think I spotted a house that had a gay flag outside of it. I encountered about three, three, four gay people who are just living their lives and presenting themselves in a manner that would probably read as gay to other people. Yeah, those are the things that I truly liked about Nairobi in the three days that I was there. Also, fourth thing that I liked, which is an extra thing now, was that it felt awfully familiar. Babala mentioned that it felt like a mixture of Bloemfontein and Johannesburg meshed into one, if you can picture that. Except with a lot of traffic. More traffic than the traffic that drives you insane in Joburg. So, yeah, so I liked the familiarity. It made me feel home, you know. Thank you so much, Nairobi and the BBC for hosting us. We had an excellent, excellent time. We look forward to coming back. Next video that I had set out to do, that Babala and I actually recorded, was a video where we asked Instagrammers to assume things about us. And they did, and we recorded the video. <laughs> We're not gonna come back to what happened to the video. Um, video disappeared, and now I have to reshoot it. Do you guys mind if I shoot it by myself? It's obviously gonna be super biased. So I'm the only one that's gonna be answering the questions. If you're interested in that, please let me know. I'll put a poll right here. Um, and let me know in the comment section. But for now, that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back next week. Bye.